But let's take another example. Let's say calcium. Calcium has 20 protons. What that means is 20 electrons. So two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, eight in the third shell, two in the last shell. This has zero charge. 20 electrons, 20 protons. Good. But the last shell is not stable. It is not zero. It is not eight. And it's obviously not full because last shell is full. Hone ke liye 32 what do they do? They do bonding. It will try to do something here so that it can either become zero or eight or full. And that's what all atoms do. If their last shell has not one of these, it will try to bond. That's what they do. And uh, how will, which one will it go to? Remember, electrons taking or losing them takes a lot of energy. So in this case, these two electrons, it can either lose them to bring us zero. So that is one option. Lose electrons to get to zero. Or it can gain some electrons to get to eight or full. Now think about it. If you had a number line and this side is zero, this side is eight, and let's forget about full because those are the both electrons showing isko. And if this atom is at two, which will take less energy? Going from two to zero or going from two to eight? Obviously, this takes less energy going from two to zero. So yes, Taha, you are absolutely right. It will lose these two to get to zero. And atoms that do that, do that, that do lose electrons, we say they have metallic character. If they lose electrons, that is called metallic character. So if atom loses electrons every time, we say it is a metal. And if an atom prefers to lose, or sorry, prefer to gain, then we say that, oh, this is a non-metal. Now, there are some that do both, like hydrogen. And that is why hydrogen is not in the metals and it's not in the non-metals in the periodic table. Although it's a non-metal, but we keep it in the middle because it does both. So what's metallic character? The ability to lose electrons. Examiner will use this word. What's the definition? So while you can, you should know metallic character. But you should know that. So this tells me that there are one option is they lose electrons and they get to zero. That's one option. They just lose electrons. So electrons can be, can be lost. electron just to get to zero. If an atom does that, we say it's metallic character. And this is what most metals do. And that is why this is called metallic bonding. Second option is, what if one loses the electron and the other gains the electron? We say there's a donation, transfer of electron. If that happens, then it's usually metals losing, non-metals gaining. And that is called ionic bonding. And there's a third option that they don't transfer, they don't lose, they share electrons. And this one is always done between non-metals most of the time. But there are some examples of metals doing it. Yes, Taha. Transfer. Ionic bonding always involves transfer of electrons. Ek atom lose karega, dusra atom gain karega. And the third one is when they share. And sharing happens in the last shell. So last shell is called valence shell. That's why it's called covalent bonding. Co means sharing. And valent means last shell. Remember, only valence electrons take part in bonding. So only the last shell. Joska inner shell hoga, it will never do that. So here we have valence electrons taking part in bonding, and these electrons can be lost, transferred, shared. And atoms do all three, except they always choose the path that takes less energy. So let's start with the first one, 